Good morning, Sanford, as we wake up for another day to talk about Coyotes football here on the Howler on the Sanford Sports Radio. As last week, of course, you come, or I'm sorry, the Sanford College Coyotes fell to the NC State Wolfpack, and it was not a good feeling. Let's go into something that will make us feel a lot better, and that's talking about the recruiting trail this year for Samford, as Cameron Wilson still is on board to come to Samford. And that is a huge situation right now. Wilson is the biggest target on the board, and with him, we'd have a deadly combination with the looks of how Fellas is playing this year. Parker Freddy, I mean, it's almost a guarantee he's going to BYU right now. I don't like it. I think the kid's a great pass rusher. However, well, you can't question him for wanting to stay close to home. Bryston Mitchell, the middle linebacker, is seeing something in West Virginia, and it's going to be hard to change his mind. No one seems to be able to. We are second on his board. That's the positive. West Virginia apparently has a huge lead over everyone else from what I'm hearing. Now, Tanner Patrick, the young quarterback at Cincinnati, Ohio, is still having Sanford at the top of his board. We've got a good lead, and I have a good Good feeling that we can keep Patrick here coming to Sanford. That would be enormous. But of course, talking about quarterbacks, there's Nate Walker, who currently has Virginia in the lead for him. UConn's on his board as well, and we're fourth, but I don't think he is a huge necessity in Coach Wolf's eyes. Coach Wolf sees him as a big quarterback, as a big playmaker, but he likes Tanner Patrick's uh, combination of skills, if you want to put it one way. His speed and athleticism help maximize his potential. Deshaun Hollis still has Samford at number one, and it looks like the New York prospect is going to be playing for another Wolf like his brother played for Adam Wolf in San Fran. As Daniel Gregory the fourth still leading with North Texas. He wants to stay close to home, but Sanford is trying to argue. The kid's pretty stubborn, and he seems to be set in his morals to stay close to home. Flash Gibson, on the other hand, it looks like Sanford's going to be that school to take the lead. Clemson isn't going hard after him. Sanford's really one of the only schools to offer him a scholarship, and it seems like he's appreciating that. Now, Pat Riley, I think he's finally getting on board with the fact of he knows he's going to have to learn, which is huge. It gives us a big advantage. I think he'd rather learn from his brother here at Sanford than anybody else. Now on to some big news, and that's Joe Irvin, the big defensive tackle. Guess who's now number one in his eyes, apparently? Well, we've been hearing that... Notre Dame has fallen to number two on his board, and the Coyotes have jumped to number one. The big pass rushing D tackle looks to be eyeing the Coyotes. That is huge for this whole team, as that is one of the biggest gets if we can grab him and bring him into a Coyote uniform next year. Now let's talk about the upcoming game, the rivalry game of the season against the Yukon Huskies. It's Coyotes versus Huskies football, and guess what? You'll never be shocked at this, I'm sure. We're not favored to win. However, one thing that was a big situation this week, and I wanted to discuss it with Coach Wolf, was what would he consider a good outing for this team? Now, he told me that, yes, they got their first points. They're happy about that. That was their goal last week. He said this week, at least score and try to make it competitive. So we could consider a moral victory this week if we can keep it competitive with UConn. I mean, that's a big if in my opinion after what we saw last week and that run defense is going to have to stay solid. And this could be a big, big game seeing that next week will be the start of Matt Conference play for Samford and UConn has to face Number four, Michigan at home. So that'll be an interesting test for them next week. 
And talking about interesting things coming up next week, I'll take the time now to bring up that I also heard from Coach Wolf during my interview with him talking about this week's game that next week will be the first of a couple live open practices. He's going to allow the fans to come in to the practice facility to come see these kids play before the MAC opener. That is huge. It allows for the Samford fans here and from anywhere else if they want to fly in or whatever they want to do. Come to Sanford, allow them to see these kids on the practice field, and maybe it'll give the kids a little more almost incentive seeing all these people in the practice facility that want to see them come out on top. Hopefully that'll help this team out going into the Mac comp going into the Mac opener and give them some momentum and, you know, some passion to go in hard. Now let's talk about one thing before we get to discussing some stuff during the practice highlights. I want to talk about Sheriffs, the quarterback for UConn. This kid is going to be the big threat. Keep your eyes on him because he not only has a good arm, but he's got mobility to him. He's arguably a dual threat unlike any other. Think Cam Newton when he first entered the NFL. It's that type of situation. And if this defense doesn't play well, I'll tell you now, I don't think they can beat the Yukon Huskies one bit. I don't think they can oppose the Yukon Huskies. They run the football a lot, so that run defense that we didn't see last week is going to be tested heavily. So now let's get into some stuff that you fans wanted to hear. There were no big questions. I think the big question really still states how good is this team. And I said it once before, if they can be competitive with UConn, Coach Wolf will see this as a moral victory this week. Personally, I'm questioning that with what we saw from the NC State game. I personally want to see another big game from her fellows. I want to see him continue to be a big playmaker. And I want to see the run game get off the ground this week. If those two things happen, hey, I'll be up in the booth calling the game saying we won. But we did have one thing coming from some of the fans. It was, I believe, someone who went by the name of, yes, here it is, the Game McNugget. He brought up a thing that I think Coach Wolf would love to be almost the mantra this year. Greatness is waiting. And he even gave me a nice little thumbs up on the radio here. So, you know, thanks for the compliment there, Nugget. But I do think greatness is awaiting for this team. They just have to find their spot. If they can find that sweet spot, not only on the offensive side, but on the defensive side, and really just be able to capitalize on mistakes from opponents and be able to not make those mistakes themselves, this team has so much potential. We saw what Parker Dillon is capable of in Week 2. We saw what Herb Fellows is capable of in Week 2. We saw what the defensive line can do. They can be devastating. Elliott Flowers showed off his pass rushing skills. Shane Townsend showed off that he can get to the quarterback. This, te this team isn't as bad as I believe the score from week two showed. They just have to make sure they don't make those mistakes because they can't at this point fight back from those big mistakes. It's Surprisingly, Kenny West got some time at quarterback during some of practice. Normally, we haven't seen that, at least not early on here. So maybe they're thinking of involving Kenny West in the offense this week. We'll have to see when we get to game time. But folks, I will let you go for the end of practice. And I will see you this Saturday when we... Head to the home opener, the first game in the Sanford City Stadium. And the first home game is just got to be the biggest home game of the season with the rivalry game against UConn. I will see you folks Saturday, and I will be there on the call.
As hello everyone in Sanford, we are here in Sanford City Stadium in Sanford, Maine, and I am your man on the call here for the Sanford Sports Radio. Everything Coyote Sports comes from me, Jonathan West, here on the call, and man, it feels good to be up here in the press box at home. The opening game here in the Sanford City Stadium, a lot of the kids have been calling it the Den because, of course, the Coyotes, they have their dens. That's where they make home. And that is what the kids here at the school have called it. I like it. It's catchy. It works. But enough of the pleasantries right now. We got football here as the home contest. And not to mention, have you seen the uniforms that the Coyotes are rocking this week? They're going black and blue combination. Coach Wolf wanted to come out and show off one of the multiple uniform sets they have. They've got, I believe, if you use all their combinations, four sets they can utilize. But rocking their black and blues today in the home opener. And they hope to let these fans go home happy with a big, big positive in way of progressing here as we are underway as the Sanford Coyotes will kick off the Newsome here for UConn. And he's got room. He is a deadly, deadly running back for this UConn offense as he gets 27 yards on that return. First and 10 now for the Huskies. And Sheriff's under center. Newsome behind him. And Sheriff's is going to take it early. He connects with Myers. That's Tommy Myers, the big tight end. He's going to gain 18 up near midfield. That's going to be a tough guy to stop. Because he's a powerful tight end as Newsome here on a new first down. Gets nine yards as he even hurdled a guy that was laid out. And they're going to utilize this run game a lot today. Newsome picking up the first down there on the two-yard carry. It's going to be exactly what they want to do. They're going to want to keep everything on the ground. And Sheriff's now showing off the athleticism I talked about on the Howler earlier this week as 30 yards from Sheriff's showing off his mobility. And this no huddle offense they're running is not helping this defense one bit. It's a young defense. They're, they can't afford to use up this much stamina. That's a big hit there from, I believe it was Dante McPherson that laid out Newsom. He'll be out for a couple plays as Ron Johnson comes in and into the end zone goes UConn. It starts off poorly here as the ground game shows itself for the Huskies as they score first 7-0 UConn on top. And now it's time to see Sanford as they'll start on the ground as well. Nigel McTaggart with a four-yard carry. As the black and blue here going to try and make something happen that didn't happen last week. And that gaining yards on the ground is a huge hit on McTaggart. They're going to show the replay here in the stadium. And my God, a second look at it doesn't help. As Parker Dillon to throw here on third and six. He lobs it up for her, her fellows. But that is intercepted, one toe in bounds as Watkins gets the pick. Dylan's first throw is an interception today and I don't blame him for looking fellow's way, but he's gotta be smarter on throws like that. He can't be just lobbing it up, hoping fellow's comes up with it. As Newsom gains seven, on that run in very good field position for UConn now as Newsom takes the carry again and he'll get another first down for these Huskies. As they give it right back to him, it's just an offense ran by Arkell Newsom. As Sheriff's dropping back on third down here. Wide open near the sideline. Buddy's out of bounds, thank goodness, but wait a minute. There's going to be a booth review here. They're showing the replay here in the stadium, and from my eyes, that is out of bounds. He had just about his foot split in half by the white line. And the call is... They've reversed it! Now that was as clear as day. 
You can't be making calls like that because that was a call that's obviously made to help UConn. Luckily, Newsom losing four there on that carry. Chris Wood, the slot corner, he was able to come up and stuff that run. But that was a mistake by the referees. And if we're going to see that, there's no way Sanford can win. As Ron Johnson right up the gut for a gain of six and back into the end zone as Ron Johnson now has a pair of TDs for the Huskies early on here. As first and 10 now for Sanford, back to the ground they go as Timmy Shelby gains five on the first carry of this drive. They expect to see a lot of splits for McTaggart and Shelby, at least from what Drew Martin told me. As Castello, the man who gets the catch, he's the backup tight end. And Darren Castello really got turned around, unable to gain anything. It's on third and six across the middle. That's Mike Ashley. He hangs on. The senior with a gain of 10. There we go. A play like that is exactly what this team needed to get going. As now a new set of downs, they got the first first down of the day out of the way, but McTaggart can't find room. Junior Joseph takes him down for a loss of two, and they have to get the ground game going. I talked about that being key, but that's key as well as, you know, the names kill me. And I don't think I'm going to be able to say that one right. I do know his first name. Obi gets the interception, and he's a big NFL prospect, and that interception is not going to hurt his draft stock one bit as that is a huge mistake they can't afford to be making those mistakes they go back to Newsom here to Zhukong as only or I'm sorry loss of one on that carry Sheen Towns and the man on the tackle and finally the defense is showing up in run support as only a gain of two there for Newsom it's third and nine already Shares dropping back. Looking to throw. And he connects with Thomas. He connects with Noel Thomas in the back of the end zone. And that's on Richard Cruz. Cruz lost his man for just a second. He decided to go elsewhere. It left Noel Thomas wide open. And well, he paid the price for it. As Luke Lumpkin going to return this one. He's got some blocks. He's to the outside of the 30. The 40, and he is down at about the 40, 41 yard line. Great return by Luke Lumpkin. As now this offense has solid field position, they've got to make something of this. It's a two yard run there from McTaggart. It's just stop and go at this point. You don't know what you're going to get today in this running attack. McTaggart gets another straight handoff, but he goes backwards. He loses the he loses the positive yards he got in the first place. As that takes us to the end of the first quarter, Connecticut's up 21-0. Sanford not looking good here. We'll be back on the Sanford Sports Radio with more. Welcome back, everyone, to the Sanford Sports Radio. Sanford down 21-0. A big third and 10 situation is Tremaine Dingle, the freshman with the catch and a first. Good job, kid. As Parker Dillon hands back off to McTaggart, and there's the first big run, in my opinion, for Nigel McTaggart this season. A gain of eight, setting up a manageable second and two. They'll pitch it out to side to Timmy Shelby on that second and two, but he'll go down for a loss of three. Matthew Walsh, the man on the tackle. As third and six now, Parker Dillon looking to make something happen. They're going back to the air. And wide open was Castello. That time he wasn't turned around. That's 14 yards and a new set of downs. For these Coyotes, they're finding some momentum finally. This is a good drive going. As first and 10, that one's knocked away. Harrison Frazier was the intended target, but unable to get him and could have been intercepted. As second and 10, they go back to the ground and make Taggart loses the football. It's picked up by Diggs. Diggs has all the running room he needs to the 30. 
2010-5 touchdown, UConn. You have got to be kidding me. Right when it looked like everything was going the way of the Coyotes, the Huskies force a fumble, and it's their football again. This time they take it to the end zone, and it's 28-0. Huskies on top as McTaggart once again can't go anywhere. We may have to be thinking of about even just a slight change if they want to make something positive happen here with this running attack. As a deep ball there to Sean Merritt, the tight end on second and ten. Parker Dillon is at least having a good day through the air right now. As Dillon to throw again on first and ten here, he finds Sean Merritt a second time. That's a four-yard gain that time. Merritt wears the big 87. Coach Wolf says he's our version of Gronk, a great pass catcher and a solid blocker at that. As McTaggart gets another handoff and he's pushed backwards big time, but luckily got back to the line. As third and six, Dylan looking to throw. Can he make something happen? Indeed he can, but it's dropped by Mike Ashley. That was a first down that the senior just dropped. And that is a huge disappointment. As first and 10 now for UConn. As Sheriffs goes back to Newsom. Only two yards. This rush defense has been a lot more steady today than it was last week. As Newsom still can't find much room to run. Only a gain of one as Trey McLaughlin was there for that tackle. Third and seven outs, the no huddle continues for UConn. Shares hands off to Newsom, and Newsom finds the room. That is what's disappointing right there, folks. Newsom finds the room and powers through. First down for UConn. As Shares takes the snap on first and ten, wide open is Tommy Myers downfield. Dante McPherson, the only man who could stop him, and he's able to. Down at the four. Myers got behind everybody, and we're lucky McPherson could catch him. As it's first and goal now for UConn. Sheriff's under center. He's got to, I mean, this defense has to make something happen. Sheriff's to take off. Luckily, they forced him to slide earlier than I believe he wanted to. Down at the one. Second and goal, Shares looks to throw. He wanted to connect with his receiver, unable to. Steven Young on top of it. Good deflection. The first incompletion of the day for Shares. Shares hands off to Ron Johnson, and the third time for Ron Johnson. His hat trick on the day as he gets three short yardage touchdowns. It's 35 to nothing, folks. It's not pretty right now. We're not even to halftime as Luke Lumpkin gets another chance in a return game. Make it at least as good as last time. Looks like it. Even better out at about the 43. First and 10, Dylan to throw across the middle. Connects with Sean Merritt. 20-yard reception for the big tight end. Things have to go the way of the Coyotes this drive. They got to make something happen. Deep ball at her fellows. 34 yards for the man who had a big day last week. And what a beautiful throw by Dylan. Puts it right between two defenders where only fellows could get it. Beautiful connection by these two. As first and goal, Dylan tosses out to McTaggart. They just got a running touchdown, folks. A rushing touchdown today. The first of the the year in the first in school history. It's seven to 35. They've scored before the half. That's important. As Sheriff's taking off and he's caught from behind luckily. That was Colvin who caught him by the ankles. Second and nine after he only could gain one on that run to the outside. Sheriff's hands off to Newsom. He's caught by the ankles, Colvin been quite the powerhouse at the ankle tackles. As Beals though able to get a reception there, Tyreek Be Beals able to make something happen but he was shaken up there 
after that play. As shares the throw, connects with Lamel. That's six yards on that catch. Man in motion, still trying to get into place after the no huddle. Shares finds an open Lamel again. He's brought down. That's McLaughlin. Or I'm sorry, I believe that was Stephen Young that brought him down. As Colvin able to make, or I'm sorry, as Shares able to find Tommy Myers. So I'm getting all mixed up here with this no huddle. Less than 10 seconds remain as Lamel connects with, Br I'm sorry, Brian Lamel with another reception on the day. Dante McPherson has been all over the field today. Shares to take off. This will be the last play of the half, and he's not going to get in the end zone. Game's 11, but not into pay dirt, as that'll take us to halftime. Connecticut on top, 35-7. But hey, Sanford scored, folks. We'll be back with the second half on Sanford Sports Radio. Welcome back to the second half here on the Sanford Sports Radio, folks, as Nigel McTaggart only games two. This is UConn versus Sanford, and it's not looking pretty for the Coyotes, but they did score before half, and that is a big, big thing for this team right now. It's a five-yard game for McTaggart there. Maybe he can start getting that running game going a little more. He's already had 12 carries today. As Dylan to throw connects with a wide open Sean Merritt. You want to talk about a man having a day. Sean Merritt, the tight end, is looking like a big target for this team. As Parker Dillon, he's going to run. Sheriff saying the only man with wheels, apparently. He dies, or I'm sorry, he slides and gets a big first down into Husky territory. Dillon hands off to McTaggart again, but he is stuffed. A loss of two there. As that is not what you want to see. McTaggart not doing what he needs to do to get the job done here. Dylan, deep ball, and it's picked off. Watkins, second pick of the day. I saw who he wanted, and he wanted Fellows. He was unable to get him. Or I'm sorry, that was Tremaine Dingle as a, I see the uh, replay on the here at the stadium. It was Tremaine Dingle. He just threw it late, and, well, that causes the interception. As Sheriffs finds a rare drop here by his players on offense. That's another incompletion for Sheriffs. That's fun to see. He's only got two on the day right now. As Mayala, with his first reception of the day, as Hergay Mayala gains 11 on that catch. First and 10 now for UConn as they're in the shotgun formation. Sheriffs looking to make something happen here. He finds Myers wide open. Tom, it's been the battle of the tight ends today. Tommy Myers versus Sean Merritt. And personally, I can argue Merritt has fought just as hard as Myers. As Sheriffs Trying to find room to run, he finds it, and that's going to be enough for the first 13 yards. But Sheriffs is shaking up. This is a huge situation, folks. Backup quarterback in the ball game is Anderson as he pitches it out to Arkell Newsome, and he gains five, loses the football, but it goes out of bounds. Second and five now under centers Anderson. He's going to drop back. Looks to throw, hooks up with Mayala. That is a first down gain of 13 tackled by Stephen Anthony. Or I'm sorry, Stephen Young. As first and 10, shares hands off to Newsom and he is stuffed. Young and I believe Chris Wood were the two men there. As third and 11, shares is gotten back into this ball game already. Wide open, Hergay Mayala. You've got to be kidding me. This drive was all about Mayala. Didn't matter the quarterback. Mayala had four receptions, if I am not wrong on my math there, on this drive and capitalized with a touchdown. 42-7 as Sanford takes back over, and it's the same situation. McTaggart can't gain anything. Third and nine here. Five wide set is Dylan gonna throw. 
He connects with Sean Merritt, middle of the field. That's a big play. Last week, it was her fellow showing off. This week, it's Sean Merritt. At least we're seeing guys show up. We're seeing names that these fans can remember. We're seeing guys to trust on this offense as Dylan throws deep and Tremaine Dingle comes back to it. 22 yards gets in front of the man, gets in front of the defender who would have had the interception. As Dylan can't find his man in time there on second and eight, falls for a 13 yard sack. That'll make it third and very long at a third and 21. Third and 21 here, shotgun formation. Dylan, we know he's throwing. Throws it up and it's picked off second time today for OB. You have got to be kidding me. There will be a penalty though. It's clipping. That's going to be on UConn following the interception. So they will be moved back to their own 14-yard line. But that takes us to the end of the third, folks, and it ain't pretty. 42-7, Connecticut on top. We'll be back with the final quarter of play here on the Sanford Sports Radio. It's the final quarter of play here for UConn versus Sanford on the Sanford Sports Radio. I'm Jonathan West, and it ain't pretty, folks. It is not pretty one bit. But this team has at least given us a new name to watch in Sean Merritt. As Arkel Newsom can only gain two. And we are seeing a better run defense. At least against the top running back this week than we saw last. As Sheriffs can't get away. That's Elliott Flowers picking up the sack. He's got two on the year now. Good job Flowers. He fights through the tackle and is able to come through big to bring down Sheriffs. And the first punt of the day for UConn, that is a huge positive. As Lumpkin gonna get good field position for the Coyotes taking it into UConn territory. And it's been, well, a very poor day for this offense other than the fact that they've been fighting. As it looks like Kenny West has been brought into this ball game, a loss of two there for McTaggart off the speed option. They brought Kenny West into the ball game, maybe kind of almost signaling the end of really hoping they can come out on top as Harrison Frazier with an 11 yard reception there, his first of the year. As third and one, West wanted the option, but he should have handed all. A loss of two for Vontae Diggs as they are out on fourth and three. Nothing to lose. Might as well take the chance. And Kenny West makes the chance pay off. First down. Six-yard rush. Thought I should mention no relation between myself, Jonathan West, and Kenny West. As West looks to throw and it's picked off. Junior Joseph. The booze reigning here in the stadium. It's not pretty. We never said it would be a pretty game. But. It shows how much work is needed to be done here. As Sheriffs takes the ball here for UConn, finds Mayala, who's now apparently going to be the top target today. It's 12 yards there. That's his fourth reception. I'm sorry, I said he had four on the last drive. Yeah, he gets his fifth here on a 10-yard reception, does Mayala, as it's becoming his ball game. First and 10 now for Sheriffs. Trying to find room to run. He's brought down Shane Townsend. Picks up his second sack of the year. Townsend and Flowers. The defensive powerhouses on this line it looks like this year. Keep those names in mind, folks. You'll definitely be able to see them this week at the first open practice of the season. As third and 12, Sheriffs connects with Newsom. Guess who's got a punt again? I call that a positive. As now UConn punts back to Samford, and Kenny West gets another shot on offense. And there's Herb Fellows, but he can't hold on. Come on, Herb. Summers, the man who was tackling him as he went for the catch. He couldn't hang on, loses the football, and now it's second and 10 for Kenny West. 
He's going to take off on a designed run, but gains nothing. The big positive for West is his mobility. We're seeing it on display. It's just not working out in the positive way they thought it would. As West saw the pressure coming, tried to get rid of it, and Matthew Walsh takes advantage with the interception. It's a young team and an experienced team taking on a team that's been, well, in the FBS in a top, well, I wouldn't say top, but good conference. And it shows the difference here. UConn right now is what I think this team wants to strive to become earlier, or I'm sorry, sooner rather than later. It's 13 yards there for Arkell Newsom. And I will say I think they might just add another touchdown. Ron Johnson in the game. And he's going to make it four touchdowns on the day. I'm happy for Ron Johnson over on UConn's side. He's having a great day. Looking like a beast here with four touchdowns. Which just has not been a positive. However, this team is not going down without a fight as Tremaine Dingle gets the reception. A gain of 13 there. We're going to see what Kenny West still has in store here with that arm. Second and 10, West under center. He's going to drop back. Tried to connect with Fellows, but Fellows was covered by Jamar Summers entirely. As third and 10, West the throw. And he overshoots Sean Merritt. That means fourth and 10. This will be the last play of the ball game. And UConn takes it. As UConn will take the W 49 to 7. It was a killer. When things went wrong, they went wrong. That's the easiest way to put it. This week was not a positive week by any means, but I wouldn't call it a complete negative. There were some small positives to get out of this game. We saw a bit of what Kenny West can bring to this team in his mobility. Got a film we'll probably see more of that as the season goes on, but a big thing to talk about this week was, of course, Sean Merritt. We now know we have another big weapon in the passing attack with Sean Merritt. Maybe this team needs to look more towards that passing attack than that running attack as their prime focus. I know Coach Wolf wants to run the football. He wants to play old school football like his dad. But with the way this team's been working, the passing attack is the way to go. Pass the ball, it looks like he got a chance. Run the football, McTaggart's just going to get stopped. Unless something changes next week against Western Michigan. I think the passing attack's the way they need to go. We'll see you folks next week in what is going to be a huge matchup in the opener for Mac play here at home at Sanford City Stadium. And remember, next week, the first of what hopefully will be many live open practices for you Sanford fans. I will see you folks at the live practice. I am Jonathan West for Sanford Sports Radio, and I will see you then.